What's up, DC Nation? Back to another video on Justice League. Today we're checking out Justice League number 52, The Garden of Mercy Conclusion. Guys, yeah, this Garden of Mercy storyline was only two issues. It started last issue in issue number 51, and it's written by Jeff Loveness and drawn by Robson Rocha. Now, last issue, I praise the guys. You saw that review, which I'll actually link the video below so you don't get lost when you're jumping into this issue. But in that issue, it was just amazing, guys. The writing was so good because we saw the return of the Black Mercy, which is like a parasite that just feeds off your life force while you're pretty much in your mind going through this perfect world, this perfect fantasy that, like, the best world you ever want. Like, with Superman, he pretty much has son. He, uh, his parents didn't die. He's having a good life. Where Batman, pretty much his parents didn't die. He never became the Batman. He was just Bruce Wayne. So it's pretty much like the perfect lives that they never lived. But you're like, oh, that sounds great, right? But the parasite feeds off you and kills you. So that's not good. Now, in the previous Black Mercy storyline in uh, pretty much Superman Annual number 11, written by Alan Moore himself, we saw Superman go through this and have like a son, his parents didn't die, and he was trapped in that perfect world. While this storyline, this two-part storyline, is more focused on Batman. And we start to see that pretty much take shape in this issue. Last issue was like, okay, I can see this as a Justice League book. But this issue, I'm like, this is a totally Batman book. Like, it's guys... All the Justice League members don't even say anything in this book, except for Superman and Batman. Like, Wonder Woman literally has, like, no lines, I think. Like, she may have, me have one. Flash, Jon Stewart, not really anything. But you see them in action, but it's more focused, like, pretty much laser-focused on Batman, which I'm totally cool with. Like, it's really cool to see the Black Mercy go inside of Batman's mind and see Jeff Loveness pretty much show this character arc with Bruce. And it's really good, guys, and they really use the Black Mercy perfectly, but the question is, does this issue, part two, the conclusion, pretty much keep the quality of the previous issue? Because, guys, you don't know, I gave the last issue, part one, the storyline, a 10 out of 10. I thought it was a masterpiece. Like, it was just perfect. But does this issue keep that up? And since this is only a two-part storyline, does it end on a good note? Does it end on a big note? Or is it rushed? Well, without further ado, let's dive in and find out. So guys, how this issue starts out is we start where last issue ended. We pretty much Bruce meet with uh, Martha Wayne. Like pretty much he's stuck in his mind, right? And he sees Martha Wayne, who is the Black Mercy. And the Black Mercy says, I'm a little tired of it, aren't you? The same old story, like it's the only one you know. The only way I matter to you, all you are is this. And you see pretty much the gun, pretty much his parents get gunned down. It's the same story we've seen multiple times where Bruce, he watches his parents die right before his eyes when he's leaving pretty much the Marnark Theater. Now, we see uh, Martha, who's controlled by the, uh, who is the Black Mercy, saying, but aren't you tired, Bruce? Don't you want to be something new? Let me show you. And you see all the Just League just pretty much taken over by the Black Mercy. And then we see Bruce, he's like, get out. And uh, Martha's like, Bruce. And Bruce continues to say, I'll say this one last time. Get out. And you see him turn into the bat, guys. He looks dope. He looks really cool. And Martha looks at him. And she's like, oh, Bruce, that's not what this is. And you see Bruce as Batman just in, like, this nightmare version is just walking around her. And Martha Wayne's like, I know you uh, want to be that way. Another trap for you to escape, but it's not. And Bruce says, you are not her. You are not Martha Wayne. And actually, Bruce goes to attack the Black Mercy. And Black Mercy says, and hey, you aren't him. I'm not talking to you. I'm, I'm talking to the child you stole, the child you murdered. And this nightmare version of Batman transforms back into Bruce. So what the Black Mercy is saying is that the Batman, this whole incarnation of Batman, this idea of the Batman, murdered Bruce Wayne, took this innocent child and made him into this, pretty much this person on this uh, this journey to uh, pretty much put a war on crime, which the Black Mercy is, is right. Like, he is right. Like, think about it. Like, yeah, Bruce was an innocent child. He could have easily, okay, uh, got over his parents' death. Maybe he had a good life, but instead he took this route of the Batman. And it's led to a lot of tragedies, a lot of depression, a lot of big stuff that weighs down Bruce every day. But the big thing about Bruce's character and Batman, he keeps pushing forward. Now, we see Martha talk to Bruce. She's like, I'm talking to my son. It's okay. I'm here. He's gone. You can let go now. So she's telling Bruce, don't worry, the Batman's gone. And Bruce says, this isn't real. No. And Martha says, no, but good things are. And Bruce says, you're the Black Mercy. And Mar Martha says, all I am is the truth. And Bruce says, you're a telepathic parasite physically feeding me my greatest desire while consuming my physical body. 
And Martha says, oh, Bruce, no one knows who I am. I wish you did. I'm the only one who can give you what you want. Isn't it sad? Everyone knows what they want, but they're too afraid to take it, to live the lives they need. So they break themselves day by day, scared to even dream of a better world. But I give the, I give it to them. So Black Moose is like, hey, I'll give you your perfect world. And Bruce pushes the Black Mercy back. The Black Mercy continues saying, Can I give that to you, Bruce? Aren't you tired of being afraid? You've felt glimpses of them, haven't you? Your other lives, your other stories, they all end the same way, don't they? After all that, just you in the cave, all day alone. And you see an older Bruce, which reminds me of Batman Beyond, guys. Pretty much Batman Beyond Bruce. And then you see turning against your friends, against anyone who could have healed you. Did you ever ask, why it always ends this way? Did you ever think it would be better? And Martha says, what is it all for? And you see Bruce turn to Batman, but not really a nightmare version. And he says, it's for you. He says, I swore an oath that I would never let it happen again to anyone. And Martha says, I know, sweetie, and you, you've done so well. You've been so brave. you saved so many people. But to do it, you killed the person I love most. And all I want to see is him live again. And Martha says, Bruce, you built so much, but all this is a prison where no one can get in. And if they do, you have to control them. That isn't life. You, you say you did this for me, but this is not what I want. And Batman looks at the Black Mercy and looks at Martha Wayne and is just analyzing this. He's like thinking like, wait, is what I'm doing, is my crusade the right crusade? Which is really interesting, guys. It's actually really interesting stuff. And to see Martha just go into Bruce's mind, it's like, hey, have you seen pretty much alternate worlds? Well, I think of it as pretty much else worlds. And you've seen this, and you're like, wait, some are happy lives, some are just like, you grow old, and you're still a Batman, you're still in depression. Which life do you want to choose? And Bruce just turns back into Batman and thinks about this. Now, you see Bruce, he's studying this Black Mercy, the Black Mercy could do say, that's the thing about truth, Bruce. Out there in the real world, we say we love it, cherish it, fight for it. But only the truth that we know, never the truth that sets you free. You see Wonder Woman, she gets to hold up uh, Last of Truth and she escapes the Black Mercy. So the Last of Truth escapes this. So it proves that the only thing uh, that can get you out of Black Mercy is truth itself, which is the Last of Truth. But what we see Wonder Woman do, do is she then frees her comrades justly. She frees Jon Stewart. She frees the Flash, and then they start going to Batman. Batman's the last one left inside the Black Mercy. And the Black Mercy says, you've been doing this a long time, Bruce. Is it getting better? And Batman says, I can't stop. And Martha says, I know. I know you won't. People need you. Maybe the world is too broken for truth. And Martha says, but in here I can give you something. And Batman's like, what, a lie? A world where you and father never died? A perfect life? And Martha says, no, just a lie. Something more than this. And she says, you swore an oath to your father. Now swear one to me. Batman looks onto her. He looks, he stares, and then he takes off his helmet. Well, he takes off his cowl, right? Pretty much symbolizing that he's done being Batman. And Martha says, thank you. Now go. Now what the Black Mary says, yes. He protected you when you needed him most, but you are not a mask, Bruce. You're my son, and there's so much more you can be with him, uh, than him. Don't you see, Bruce? He was holding you back, trapping you, and so were they. With your mind, your uh, devotion, your resources, just look at what you could do. Turn your enemies into friends. Give those friends the help they need. End the game and make sure the truly dangerous never hurt anyone again. Which, guys, this page is really interesting because what the Black Mercy is saying is, hey, you, the Batman pretty much helps you in these darkest times, but you don't need him anymore. He actually made you worse. The justly made you worse. This whole thing of a hero made you worse. Think about just being Bruce Wayne. Live a good life, and in the process, you'll actually prevent all these enemies from actually becoming villains. So, it proves that Batman, when he became Batman, he pretty much sprung all his villains. He created Poison Ivy. He created Two-Face. He created the Joker. It shows if you're Bruce Wayne, you can help out these enemies and turn them into friends. You can actually stop the Joker once for all. You, you can stop all this chaos. What's the Black Mercy? That's the point. But Bruce starts to see, eh, this is really true. But as we continue on this perfect world, you see Bruce, he's growing old. And you see him at the Hall of Justice, and the Black Mercy says, yes, some things will end, but you don't have to be afraid of endings, not anymore. I want to give you the one thing you don't have, a life that's not only about death. I want to give you an ending, Bruce, a happy one. Don't you deserve that? Don't you deserve that more than anyone? You, you just have to let go, Bruce. Bruce, let go. And you see Bruce, he's just older. And he's actually consuming this life. But what we see is one woman, she's outside. She's like, Bruce, we need you. Let go. 
And finally, Martha says, it's time to, for you to go, Bruce. But when you wake up, just ask yourself, how free do you feel? Batman gets out of the Black Mercy. And you see John Stewart, Wonder Woman, they're all destroying the Black Mercy guys. And Batman's just kind of like shocked by this. Wonder Woman just keeps hacking down. Superman's taking the Black Mercy away. And eventually, they find survivors of this Earth, save them. Flash actually saves them. They then get back to the jet. They pretty much fly away. And you saw the Justice. So they're all happy they got away. But Superman looks at Batman. He's pretty much questioning his whole life. And Superman notices this because he's been there before. Now, you see Batman gets back to pretty much Gotham City. He's on a rooftop. You see Superman show up. And it's very interesting how this is paneled out. And you see Superman. He's like, I have sun. The first time I touched the Black Mercy, it showed me a Krypton that never exploded. But more than anything, I remember that I had a wife, a son. People knew me, I had a life, and then I woke up. I never told Lois, told anyone, but I couldn't stop thinking about it. I would dream about it. And he says, and compared to that, my real life felt like such a lie. Did this even count as a life? But then I realized I didn't have to be this. I used the lie to protect myself, but I didn't need it anymore. I could want more. I could have a life, but I just had to be brave enough to change. And he says that, um, and Bruce, it was hard. It was so hard telling Lois. But I don't uh, know who would I be if I did. It was I was so alone. And now I don't have those dreams anymore. He's pretty much saying to Bruce that, dude, just talk to me. I know what you're going through. You're questioning everything you've ever known because the Black Mercy pretty much put this question upon you. And Superman's like, I thought about this. I remember having a perfect life and thinking that my real life is a lie. But once they start talking to people, opening it up, and actually talk about the stuff, the dreams go away, the question goes away, and I get back to my life. Now, he then says to Bruce, he's like, I found my life. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I don't know what it showed you. It probably felt real, because in, in a way, it was. I tried to run from it for so long, but it taught me something good. We change. We're allowed to change. We can uh, want new things. That means we're still alive. And Bound says, what did it show you this time? And Superman says, believe it or not, Bruce, it show me right now. And we see the final page, guys, of Superman and Batman on top of this rooftop, the world's finest, just looking out into the distance. They're not questioning anything anymore. They're not questioning their lives. They're just, they're just gonna be heroes, they're safe people, and we go on to the next story. Now, this is really interesting, guys. Now, the ending is a little abrupt. Yeah, it does feel like, all right, they beat the Black Mercy way too easily. The Just League did actually Wonder Woman, John Stewart, and Flash don't even say anything. Superman does talk with Batman at the end, but that's it. It's more Batman focused, which is done really well. It shows that Batman he could have been taken control of, and it shows how Black Mercy just controls you, makes you question everything. That's a really interesting concept. And see that Black Mercy take control of Bruce. Batman, one of my favorite characters, is wow and also very interesting at the same time. And it's done so well, guys. But I will agree that the ending is kind of like, alright, I kind of wish they had another uh, issue. Because what if we saw pretty much what Wonder Woman was going through? What if we saw what Jon Stewart was going through? What if we dive deeper into Batman? Well, it's only a two-part, so that means it has to be shortened. But I wish we got to see more of that. That's not really a negative that you think about. I want more. That's actually good. But guys, Robson Roach's artwork is amazing. See him draw like a nightmare of Batman. And the ending where it's just so quiet. Where Batman gets out of... We must this uh, Black Mercy, and Steph, there's like no words for like three pages. You just see Wonder Woman hack it down, Bounce is shocked. And you see Superman, pretty much the art conveys everything. Seeing Superman look at Batman, and you could pretty much uh, convey from the art that, wow, Superman knows that Batman's question everything. And soon Superman show up to Batman on the rooftop. It's just done so well. Like, Robson Rocha is the true star of this. Like, yeah, Jeff Levin is doing great jobs, right? He's amazing. But it would not have been pulled off if it was for Robson Rocha. But I also have to give credit to uh, Jeff Lundness because a lot of writers put a lot of dialogue, a lot of words, make it a very worried issue, right? And don't give the art enough space to pretty much breathe. But in this case, the creative team worked perfectly. They both gave each other an, uh, enough room to show their real talents, which I really like that, guys. But yeah, guys, overall, this issue, it's not as good as last year. It's actually kind of underwhelming in comparison, but that's just because last year's a masterpiece. Well, this issue is still amazing, just is a little abrupt at the end. And that's what I'm going to give this issue a 9 out of 10. Uh, I definitely recommend it, guys. Go check it out. Um, if you're pretty much slow on money, I get it, okay? You, you just skip this arc because it technically is filler, but I do prefer to check it out, right? Like, skip the Simon Spurrier arc, and you don't have enough money, skip, like, the Robert Van D arc, even though I recommend that one. 
But if you're sure I might at least check out this two part, because it's a quick two part that's very interesting and it really dives into this character's pretty much mind, which we don't get a lot these days. We got some positive looks, other about the decisions you love, you hate it. What do you think about this two part? And are you excited for Doom Metal, the cr uh, five part crossover uh, coming in the next issue? So, like, finally, Justly is not gonna be filler, so I'm pretty excited for that. But yeah, it's like if you give a big thumbs up on YouTube, make sure to my next Justly comic review. You don't want to miss out on the next Justly review because it's going to be going over the Doom Metal uh, um, crossover, which ties into Dark Knight's Death Metal. So you don't want to miss out on that. Like, come on. Like, stay tuned. And yeah, guys, thanks for watching, and peace out.